Hi, I'm Rafi Mirzayan from Los Angeles, and I'd like to present a case of biologic tuberoplasty for the treatment of massive rotator cuff tears. When I started doing superior capsule reconstructions over seven years ago, I was routinely getting post-operative MRIs at six months. And what I noticed is that not all the grafts healed. And there were two distinct tear patterns, one where the graft was torn from the glenoid side, but leaving the tuberosity covered, and those patients clinically did well. They regained full range of motion, they had no pain, they were able to sleep through the night, and they were satisfied with the procedure. And there's patients who had a tear from the tuberosity side, leaving the tuberosity bare, and those patients did not do as well, and they were not satisfied with the procedure. And we published on this and coined the term biologic tuberoplasty effect, and we felt that the Arthroflex was acting as a biologic tissue and preventing bone-to-bone -bone contact between the tuberosity and the chromion. I'd like to take a step back and ask, where is the pain coming from in patients with massive cuff tears? We all know that bursitis and synovitis and even biceps tendonitis can cause pain, but I'd like to submit to you that bone-to-bone -bone contact occurs in patients with massive cuff tears and is a possibly a large source of their pain. This can be seen in plain radiographs. The one on the left is a patient who has an intact cuff with a 10-degree active abduction view. You can see how the supraspinatus has rolled the humeral head and gotten the greater tuberosity underneath the chromium without contact. The case on the right is a patient with a massive cuff tear at rest, and then when he actively abducts, there's abutment of the greater tuberosity against the chromium. This has also been shown in Gus Mazzocco's lab in a rotator cuff tear model, where activation of the deltoid causes superior migration of the humeral head and leads to bone-to-bone -bone contact between the tuberosity and, and the bone. And clinically, we've all seen this in patients who have a saucerized or acetabulized acromion, and there's bone-to-bone -bone contact as soon as the deltoid is activated and causes the erosion of bone. We all know that bone-to-bone -bone contact is painful. Therefore, I believe in biologic tuberoplasty in that securing the arthroflex to the greater tuberosity, acting as a biologic tissue that's permanent, and may prevent bone-to-bone -bone contact and alleviate the patient's pain. The case is a 78-year-old gentleman who's right-handed, he's retired, he has right shoulder pain for many years, he has uncontrollable uh, psoriasis, uh, he's had multiple cortisone injections to the shoulder without relief, and he insists on having surgery for pain relief. He also has multiple medical problems, so he's not the most ideal surgical candidate. On examination, he has full active elevation, but with pain, uh, there's atrophy of the supra and infraspinatus. He has four plus over five strength with job testing, but he has negative liftoff in Napoleon signs and he has active psoriatic lesions. Plain radiographs show that there's no glenohumeral joint arthritis. This is a coronal MRI showing a massive retracted rotator cuff tear. The sagittal oblique shows uh, atrophy and degeneration of the muscles as well as the massive rotator cuff tear. And the axial view shows that he has a biceps rupture and a thinned out but intact subscapularis tendon. The treatment options, he's failed non-operative uh, treatment, he is insisting on surgery. Obviously, a reverse shoulder would be the best option at his age. Uh, however, with the active psoriatic lesions, I was concerned about infection, and he's too old and has multiple medical problems and cannot undergo a lengthy procedure or a lengthy rehab, and that's why I chose to do a biologic tuberoplasty in this patient. The technique has been published in arthroscopy techniques and this is the final repair construct with the uh, arthroflex covering the tuberosity, which may prevent bone-to-bone -bone contact between the tuberosity and the chromion and alleviate pain. My post-operative protocol is significantly different from an SCR. I place them in a sling for two to three weeks. They can start active and active assist range of motion at three weeks. They have no restriction in the range of motion and strengthening can be started at three to four weeks when the surgical pain has subsided. This is an example of another patient uh, three months postoperatively. You can see that the graft is incorporated onto the tuberosity and is still present at three months postoperatively. So in patients with massive irreparable rotator cuff tears, I still look to do an SCR. That is my first primary objective is to do the SCR. Terry Muhada has shown us elegantly that it restores the glenohumeral joint kinematics and that is what I strive to do. However, there is a small subset of patients who are older, all they're looking for is for pain relief, they want a quicker rehab, and biologic tuberoplasty can play a role in those patients. Thank you very much for your time.